All right, let's say we have a React application and we wanna add authentication to our app. So here I have an example project, I call it stock prices. And let's say we have a private route here or one that should be private, only logged in users should be able to access this. And right now you can see everybody can access this. So this is still public, right? So I'm using React feed here. So routing does not come out of the box like in Next.js. Here we actually are using React router. So we're also gonna take a look at how we can create a protected route component. So we wanna add authentication to this React app. App. How can we do that? Well, technically we could do it ourselves. We can create and decode JSON web tokens and we can store the user data in our own database. We can do all of that ourselves, but it's very difficult to do authentication properly yourself. And when it comes to security and storing user data in general, to do that properly, it's very difficult. So I'm gonna use a third party solution here called Kind Auth. They have a wonderful solution and I'm a brand ambassador for them. So they are sponsoring this video, but even if they weren't, this is still what I would use. They have a very generous free tier, so check it out. As soon as you get here in the dashboard, you can set up an application. That's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna click on add application. I'm gonna call that stock prices. I'm gonna pick front end here because I'm using React Feed here, which is all client side, right? So if you have Next.js, I have a separate video on that with Kind as well. This is what you would pick. All right, so I'm gonna click on the next one. So then here we get the quick start. I'm gonna pick React here. So where is the project running? Well, actually I'm using React Feed here. By default, it's actually port 5173. So I will change this into 5173 and then next step set callback URLs because the user is going to log in and sign up on a page hosted by Kind. When the user has logged in, Kind needs to know where to send the user back to. All right, so then we can install the Kind package. Let's quickly install the package here. All right, that's done. So then here we have the Kind provider. So this is similar to how you would do it yourself if you were using the context API to store the authentication information. I'm going to go to my main.tsx file here. And then here I can wrap my entire app with the kind provider, right? So I'm using React Router here. That's why I have Router Provider. Without React Router, you would have maybe app, right? Just your app component. You would wrap that in this kind provider. We need to import this. So I can just use this IntelliSense here. You can see this is how I'm importing this. Right? So in that quick start, kind will automatically give you the right information here as well. All right, so then we've integrated kind. Now we can actually add sign up and sign in features. So let's copy this. And then let's say here on the homepage, we wanna have that login and sign up button. So that's very easy. Actually, let's go to home here and right below here, I can just paste this. Well, of course, I should actually put the import at the top. And Kind gives you this hook that you can use whenever you need some kind of information about the authentication status. So here we have register and login. So I quickly added some classes here. I'm using Tailwind and I'm gonna wrap them in, in a div as well for the layout here. So now we have those two buttons. Now, if I click on, let's say register or login, let's see what happens. If I click on register, let's see, I'm going to be redirected to a page hosted by Kind. Now I haven't specified yet how a user should be able to log in or register. And so then here after the quick start, I can go to authentication here and here I can determine how the user should be able to log in passwordless with their own password, right? even phone. I'm gonna use GitHub here for now. I'm gonna save here. All right, so that was successfully saved. I'm gonna go back here, refresh. Let's try it again. I'm gonna press on the register here. And now you can see I have this continue with GitHub button. I'm gonna press that. All right, so then here it wants me to log in with my GitHub account. All right, so then after logging in with GitHub, I'm redirected here because that's what I specified here as my redirect URI. But it doesn't look like it, right? It looks the same as before because we we aren't really rendering any kind of UI depending on the authentication status. So nothing has changed here yet. But if we go to our dashboard here in Kind, Kind will show you all of the users that have registered here. And indeed you can see here, a user has signed up with our application here. So everything is working as expected so far, but let's actually change the UI so we can actually see if the user is logged in or not. So let's say if the user is logged in, we don't wanna see these buttons. Instead, we wanna see some user information like their email, their photo, perhaps a log out button. So here what we're going to have these buttons, we're going to do some conditional rendering. So we only want to see those buttons if the user is not authenticated. So kind helps us out here and it will give us an is authenticated boolean. So then here we can wrap that entire div that holds the buttons in a check here. So if the user is not authenticated, we want to show those buttons, right? So that's what we have here. And then if the user is authenticated, so if the user is actually authenticated, we want to show user information and kind gives us that here in this hook as well. So it gives you an 
actual user object here, which we can then use here to actually show some interesting information. Right, so this is what I just added here. So we have this user object. It's of type kind user. So if you want to see what you can use here, you can use uh, IntelliSense here. You can see we get their email, family name, given name, ID, and a picture. So you get five of those things out of the box. And I'm using that right here, right? So your name, their email, we can use their picture. And then I'm also just going to show you the entire object that you get here. And now here we can actually also render a logout button. We can use the logout function, right? So here, if I scroll up, we do need to get that from the hook as well, logout. And you can see there was actually a red squiggly line here with on click for register and login. That's simply because of how this register and login are typed. So if I actually just write it in the other format, the red squiggly lines are gone. Now, if we go back, you can see I'm logged in and it does indeed render the information that it actually got from GitHub, right? So I'm logged in with a GitHub account here. This is the information that Kind got from my GitHub account. Now I can log out as well. So if I click on log out, let's actually see what happens. Now you can see I'm logged out and we get our buttons here without the user information. One other thing we may want to add here as well is a loading state because it may take some time before Kind has gathered the actual information. So here is loading is also something we can get. So here initially the user may not be authenticated because Kind is still figuring out if the user is authenticated or not. So this is only when the user is definitely not logged in. So this is when it's not loading anymore and the user is not authenticated. Right? And in fact, you may actually even do some loading state. So here, if it's loading, we may just want to say loading dot dot dot. All right, so then for the uh, bottom one here is authenticated. We may actually also want to add it here just so that everything is symmetrical. So now I'm not logged in, but I can still go to this dashboard. So how do we now protect that actual dashboard route? So we're going to create a custom protected route component. So I'm going to remove this dashboard route from here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the protect protected routes here at the top and I'm going to say here we're going to have an element this will be the protected route component we haven't created that yet but we'll do that in a second and then here this one has certain children you can see copilot already knows what I want to do here is when I want to have my private routes right so then here I'm going to have that dashboard so slash dashboard and then the dashboard component but before that gets rendered this protected route component is rendered so in here we can do a quick auth check all right so then I actually already created a protected route component here it's currently empty but this one will render before we try to render anything as a child here. So in here, we can do that off check. So we can again use that hook from kind, which will give us a bunch of things. Loading is authenticated. So here actually initially, if, it, if it's still loading, so if kind doesn't know yet, we may actually just want to render a div that says loading. Now after loading, so if it's not loading anymore, so it's not loading. And let's say the user is not authenticated, right? So then we need to make sure that the user does not get access. So here we have to do something special, right? So here what you could do is, for example, just let the user know not authenticated. And then below there, we may actually want to render a button so that the user can actually log in, right? So here we can use that login function that we also got on the homepage. We can call it right here when the user actually clicks the login button. So that's when the user is not authenticated. Now, if the user is actually authenticated, so it's not loading anymore and the user is actually logged in, is actually authenticated, we just want to render whatever the user wanted to see in the first place. So in this case, it would be the dashboard. React Router these days uses something called an outlet. So if you go to the dashboard, that's what will be rendered in that place. I will quickly add some styles here as well. And we need to make sure that we actually import it here as well. All right, so currently I'm not logged in. Now what happens is when I go to dashboard, you can see we see not authenticated. Now if I click on login, we should see the login page. And indeed we are redirected here to Kind's login page. I can click on continue with GitHub. And now I'm logged in. You can see it's getting the data for me and that's what we have now. Now we should be able to go to the dashboard and you can see we see this is a private page with, with secret data. All right, now what if we wanna get data from our API with the token that we have now, right? So kind will give you an access token. We can get that by using the get token function that we can get from the use kind auth hook. Then when you need to fetch data from your API, let's say, we can call that function to get the actual access token. And then whenever we make an API call, we need to make sure it's included as part of the authorization header, right? So we say bearer, and then here you can add your access token. So let's say you have a Node.js Express API. So here you have, let's say API stocks, then you can use the protect route middleware from kind to protect your API. So then when there's an incoming request, kind will make sure that the access token that you send with it is actually valid. So then only authenticated users can actually get access to the data. So you may also want to take a look at the audience that you can set up in that token as well. For that, I recommend that you take a look at Kind's documentation. I'll leave the link in the description. In any case, thanks for watching. Hope this was helpful. Have a nice day and I hope to see you in the next one.